All right, guys, back again to remind you about the best buzzer on the planet. It's the Brio Beardscape. They sent me three of these because they've been advertising for so long. Two of them have stayed in the box because the first one they sent me back in 2017 still kicking. Not just that. Look at that. 95 minutes remaining. I've had this thing for three years, guys. I've charged it two times. Two times in three years. I'm more concerned about losing the charger for the Brio Beardscape than I am about using the charger for the Brio Beardscape because it gets used so rarely. The ceramic blade cuts through my facial hair like butter. It's beautiful. And the battery lasts so long. It requires so little maintenance, so little lubrication, and so little cleaning. I can just throw it in the suitcase, in the travel case. Comes with me all over the world. It doesn't weigh anything. It's great for travel. I got a special deal for you guys from Brio. Hit the link in the description. Best price on the internet. And even if you maybe don't have to shave much or you're a female, make great stocking stuffers for the men in your life, guys. Hit that link in the description, and we got you covered. Good morning, everybody. Oh man, what a good day is it up here today. Not just because it's 80 degrees and perfectly sunny, but I got the LC500 convertible. I have been waiting to drive this car for a while. Uh, COVID put the little brakes on it earlier in the year, but here we have it and it is glorious. Uh, very similar to the LC500 Coupe, which was one of my favorite cars of 2018, 2018. Uh, and uh, the same naturally aspirated five liter, 471 horsepower V8 with 398 pound feet of torque. Uh, it is mated to an eight speed gearbox with paddle shifters. Uh, the convertible adds 126 pounds to the weight of the coupe, but it's still 24 pounds lighter than the hybrid version of the LC. Interesting thing about the hybrid, other than at the press launch, I have never seen one, not one. And I live in LA. I see 500s very rarely on the road, which is a travesty in of itself, but the hybrid is basically invisible. They've added CarPlay and Android Auto, and they have updated the radio to make it uh, easier to use. The power top is cloth, goes up and down in 15 seconds, and it stows where the hybrid battery goes in the hybrid one, which basically guarantees that there will never be a hybrid uh, convertible. Boo freaking who. Let's go for a drive because this thing rocks. I mean, come on. Let's talk about engines we are really going to miss when they're gone. The Toyota 5 liter V8 that began its life in the ISF of 2008 has reached a spectacular crescendo. It sounds so technical and metallic. It's got that kind of hollow sound you want somewhere between a, a, a really nicely tuned up VET and like the technical sound of uh, the E92 M3's V8. It's quite good. And man, the naturally aspirated power band is so good. It's hunting for gears less in automatic mode than the turbo engines do. I mean, when you take the top down, because it's a really well insulated car, especially as a coupe, but when you take the top down, I mean, you're just, you're just tingling your ears. You're tingling your ears, guys. I wasn't saying this about the Ferrari last week, you'll notice. The engine and its connection to the gearbox has such a motorsport feel. Oh my God, I love it. Whenever I use words to describe the LC500 to people, 
I don't usually use car words. I use like dessert words. Like, how is it? I'm like, oh, it's delicious. It's scrumptious. It's divine. It's, uh, what's that one they always use? Decadent, right? And it is those things. Looks like a concept car. Sounds like the Mulsanne straight, and we're gonna prove it to you, because here is, a, we're gonna just go from a stop once this truck, we're gonna go from first gear right through the tunnel. And a clear, and a three, and a two, and a, here we go. And you notice how when you shift, by the way, that was spectacular. <laughs> when you shift, it's not a burble tune. It's not a blah, 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 blah. It's not artificial. It's the crack. It's the, it's the crack of like thunder. It, it's real snappy and cracky. It's so good. That dong dong. The gearbox is really responsive, except in one circumstance, and that's when you try to downshift while just after getting off the throttle and coasting. Then it takes an extra second. If you downshift with your foot on the brakes, it's very fast, right? And the brakes are very good. They're nothing special. They're steel. They're not ginormous or anything like that. But we're talking GT car here. The feel is very good. But listen to the sound, guys, the sound. 7,000 RPM, thundercrack, thundercrack. Oh, yes. Oh, it's also very comfortable. Uh, the general rule with the suspension on this car is that the bigger the bump, the better the job it does of smoothing it out. So little bitty cracks in the road, I can actually feel that. Expansion joints on the 405, a little rougher than I'd like, but the big, the big bumps, the big bounces, the big zero Gs, man, this thing dials them out. I'm just addicted to the sound of winding it out though. Especially the way it just echoes off these canyon walls. They've done a pretty good job of keeping it rigid. You know, they went to the lengths to add structural reinforcement. I'm not gonna say there's zero cowl shake. There's a little bit of noticeable jiggle, just, just a hint. Remember we talked about the triangle? If you do your elbow and your hand here, you make a triangle. And if that triangle holds solid, you got a great car. Pretty good, just a hint of vibrations. Wouldn't keep me out of the convertible at all. Now we're up at elevation right here, right? We're up at about, oh, the bird lived. We're up at about 4,000 feet. So this is where I start to notice just a hint of power loss. It, at sea level where I live in Venice, the thing's got balls of steel. 471 horsepower is great. Um, up here, when I go flat at the top of the power van, it doesn't, you know, when you got a 720 or you got one of those crazy turbo motors up here, the power just doesn't die off and you need to kind of remember, NA engine, this is going to happen a little bit. Doesn't make it not fast, beautiful. I love the interior. I love the way that it's simultaneously a driver-focused cockpit with a driver-focused instrument cluster, but that it's also this huge expansive space. Feels very open and airy. Lots of leg room, lots of head room. good seats too and for the convertible they added the neck warmers it's 80 degrees today so we're not using them but if it was winter I could still go top down with a neck warmer no buffeting no buffeting with the top down let's try windows down 
still no buffeting. Perfectly even wind. That's fabulous. Very well designed. I like the gear ratios a lot. I'm really in uh, second, third, fourth, fifth for this road. Really third, fourth, fifth because there's not a lot of hairpins. And those are correct ratios. It is a big car, but it doesn't drive as big as the 8 Series. I think part of that is that it's got a relatively low cowl and a relatively flat hood. So your visibility of the hood is a little better. Oh my God, what a good car. The engine is so good. Like, like that's, that's just, cause it's four cam, so it's revvy and snappy, right? It really wants to be up at the top of the power van. You know, but it's also five liters, so it's got some good torque down at the bottom. So around town, it doesn't feel like, you know, you don't have that early turbo shove that dies off. And you don't have the, you know, the no torque of the tiny little V8s like the Italians use back in the day, of course. Touring is not dead. Grand Touring is alive and well. I can do a thousand miles in this car at this pace and be perfectly happy with my day. My back feels good. Hands feel really good on the wheel. Oh, steering. The weight is very nice. It's pretty sharp. It's not like if you've just driven Ferraris or supercars, it might feel a little lazy compared to that. Just a little more input required. But that makes it less darty. That keeps it, oh, banging off the rev limiter. That's good in manual mode. It does not upshift when you hit the rev limiter. That's very good. The softer steering keeps it a little more settled in the straight lines. You know, that sort of relaxed, one-handed driving that you can't really do in a mid-engine car, you can do that in this. But it's all about that engine, guys. It's all about that engine. We are gonna miss it when it's gone. And let me explain something to you. This car has every single hallmark of being a future classic. Every single one. Phenomenal motorsport derived naturally aspirated engine, responsive gearbox, concept car styling, limited sales when new, reliable enough to use. This one's gonna age well, guys. This one's gonna be that car. Oh yes. You know what I like about it, uh, on top of everything else is that it's absolutely fast enough to get into a grip of trouble with, right? You're gonna, you, you could, you could, oh, how about that? Transmission fluid temperature high. I was just about to say such nice things, but it turns out that in 10 minutes of canyon driving, I have overheated the gearbox. I'm not, I'm not stranded on the side of the road, but it definitely is going to need a cool down lap. Okay, that's something we should report on for sure. And that's actually kind of unfortunate because I have driven the LC500 coupe very hard on racetracks and I did not have that issue. So, all right, that's definitely something worth checking. That being said, $100,000, $102,000 the LC500 convertible gets you a phenomenal daily drivable grand touring car. And here's gonna be the big winner. The big winner is gonna be the person who buys one of these new drives it a bunch, loves it, and keeps it all the way through its collector's cycle, depreciated, appreciated, and then invested in. The person that does that 
that's the big winner because they're gonna have a car that costs like nothing to maintain, that's beautiful to drive, that's gonna be so rare that it's gonna look great for the next 20 years and eventually will be thoroughly appreciated by collectors. I might have to buy one of these things. This is this thing is badass, man. I like I every time I go outside and get in in the garage, I'm just like, yes, the LC 500 is the truth. Like this thing is so hot. Thank you to Lexus for letting me have this for a few days. Uh, sorry for overheating your gearbox. It'll probably be fine. <laughs> Thank you to you for watching. I'll see you later. Bye. And remember. Always fight your tickets. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TST10 on the Off The Record app.